All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Uh, had no luck with the bunny headband um, on version 2.3.5. And as per speedrun.com leaderboard rules, I made a save right after the opening cutscene in the tutorial level. So I'm going to load that. Time starts as soon as we take control of our hero, Sir Whoop Ass. So let's get that started right now in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. No. So we're going to head up these stairs real quick and get our first weapon. Oh, so creatively titled, Your First Weapon, but it's trademarked. Congratulations. Ass block. All right, let's see if I can nail that, that skip up here again, because that would be nice. And of course, this time I can't nail it. <laughs> there we go. That one took a little extra effort, but we got there. I'm still going to get the propeller hat, because I'm not sure if this does increase my chances or not. I don't... I'm starting to think it doesn't, but at this point, it doesn't hurt. It at least takes that hat out of the rotation. These traps don't make any sense. Who even designs living areas like this? Oh, well. Crack open a... I hope they're insured. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to get Twinkle, our first ranged weapon of the game that has the destructive force of a slight cough. This weapon is called Twinkle. And now we get to the next part of the tutorial, where we rely on random chest um, openings to try to get the bunny headband. And we got the Liberty hat, so let's see if um, the second opening is better for us. Nope. Third time's the charm? Maybe? Nope. Cowboy hat. You know, it's funny, the very first time I even started learning the speed run, I got the bunny hat the very first time I opened that chest. I've never had that luck since then. So we're just going to keep looping the save that I made over and over again in hopes that I get the bunny headband. Right now, it's not looking too good. There we go. We're cooking with gas now. And unfortunately, I am going to be very behind now. So in order to make this up, I'm going to have to, in order to set a new PB with this, I'm going to have to gain back 53 seconds. But let's defeat Kenny No Balls here real quick. It's our first boss fight of the game.
He'll definitely like the stomp attack this time around. Damn. This mysterious. She asked who our hero. She wow. All right, so Kenny Noballs is down. Now I need bacon, bacon and eggs, bacon, eggs, and a cup of cappuccino, so I can revive Milisande and continue on with our quest. A little bit of a slower start than I wanted, but it's a start nonetheless. That's the important thing. So we got to go down here and perform a ritual um, uh, with big words we don't know. And as far as I know, I've, I've tried all three as of those options, and yes. the... Um, End result is the same. So now we're going to learn about the immortal, um, who, you know, was a nice guy, turned evil, and um, created the legendary villain-beating artifact that we now must find to beat him. Now I'm a full minute behind. Kenny Noballs took me a little longer than normal because uh, he used that stop attack so many times. The Black Schmidt. We get our small, our next weapon, the small ass sword, which, unless I level up to level two, I can't even use. But. We are required... Most people would probably be leveled up by then to level 2 because you'd actually fight the enemies in the tutorial, but uh, alas, we ain't got time for that. So now we got to go get the Jetpack 2000. Uh, we get the Jetpack 2000 from the Goddess with a little bit of uh, creative maneuvering. Normally, you're, you're supposed to go down and do a quest and, you know, go down into the sewers because, you know, RPGs and sewers just go hand in hand. Uh, but we're not going to do any of that because we can just get the um, jetpack pretty early on. And uh, one thing I'm going to do, which I'm still on the fence about whether it's worth it or not, so I'm going to go into this mysterious door here and talk to our old friend Little Red Riding Hood and get the uh, Flamethrower 6000 from her. That's um, right now my backup strategy for one of the bosses in the later game. I'm a fan. So we got that. This takes about f between 10 and 15 seconds to do. So I'm not overly worried about it. Um, and this run in particular would be beneficial since I don't have to, uh, you know, since I got to make up some time. But, oh, well, we're just going to continue on. And there we go. There's the jetpack 2000. Goddess Kling asked how she felt. All right. Wow. All right. Now we got to go to the ancient ruins of Stub Toes. Now, I struggled a little bit with the pressure plates in this area. This is one of the reasons why I want the bunny headband. <clears throat> um, because it increases my movement speed. And I've worked out a way to get around these pressure plates. You're supposed to get boxes to set on them, but we ain't got time for that.
by opening the weapon menu, we get... We slow down a little bit. Okay. Didn't quite get it that time, so I'm gonna have to wait for my rolls to power up. Gotta wait to get my rolls back. But, if I open the weapon menu, and then roll twice, it's fairly consistent getting through there. Um, the trick is to... I open the weapon menu because it slows the gameplay down and allows me to time that better. And it seems like the, the sweet spot is right when um, the pressure plate turns blue. That's when you want to um, initiate the roll. And since I didn't die in here this time, that's going to save me a decent chunk of time. Because last time I took at least Great. one death you have weakened the force um, field getting more. squished Good by job. the metal bars. So that puts me now back only 13 seconds behind. So that's, that's good. It's good. It's good. So let's go to the ancient ruins of dirty feet now. That is this way. This one is super easy to get through. Um, it's just um, go straight, take down that rock wall, make a left, turn right, left again, and there's our orb. Use the jetpack to take out the orb, and we're done. The Guardian shield has been weakened. Good job, our hero. So now we're on to the Trial of Wisdom. This is an interesting level. And uh, our second boss fight of the game. That was smooth. That was very smooth. Alright, hopefully I can get through here without a death. Beautiful! Absolutely beautiful. That's how we do it right there. That's Sir Whoop Ass Whoopin' Ass. Wee. Nice little out of bounds clip right there. And so now we're just going to make our way all the way through to the boss fight. There's a specific hole in the floor up here I'm going to look for. Ah, 
That'll put me right up by where the boss is. And it's right there. I'm going to make a quick save right here. Now, in my last run, I used the jetpack to beat him. I'm going to stick with using Twinkle this time. Um, it's a little less risky. At least I found out so far anyways. And the limited amount of runs that I've done. If you time it just right, you can get the the shot from Twinkle right in there as soon as he opens his mouth. Just like that, big boy is down for the count. And we're on to our first piece of the legendary villain beating artifact, which is well. the umbrella hat. And save 30 seconds. I must have died in, uh, in my last run. Um... So now I am in the positive. I am I am 18 seconds ahead. That's good. Unfortunately, it would be nice if I was like, you know, a minute and 18 seconds ahead of my last run. But well, here we are. Perfect time for a swig of Mountain Day. Yeah, I know, um, that was likely why I wanted to make a quick save right there at the start of that fight, because I remember it, um, respawned me out of bounds, so that was kind of funny. Make another quick save and reload right here because it'll advance time in the game and this portal will open up. This portal seems to be only available during certain parts of the game, um, uh, certain certain hours within the game time. So making a save and reloading allows me to just enter that right now. This is another room that will benefit from the slow motion double roll. Beautiful. Oh, come on. He was supposed to jump. Well, there's death number one of the run. Death number two of the run. Field has been weakened some more. Great work, our hero. Well, I died twice, lost 22 seconds, but it's it's still okay. It's not it's not a dead run. When you make the long jumps, 
it seems like sometimes the, uh, um, he slides a bit before being able to jump again, so that's something I need to remember. But now we're on to the ancient ruins of Leaky Roof. I'm hoping at some point I can get a deathless run. Normally that room doesn't cause me too many issues, so a deathless run I feel like is definitely possible. This will be the first dungeon where I actually use one of the boxes, because the pressure plate is just too far away. To roll underneath it. Oh, come on! Somebody must have moved it. You, you, I, just, I just run past them all. One of the enemies must have moved my box, or I didn't get it on there quite all the way. So one of the things that I discovered recently, um, when you use the power attack on the hammer, you use the power attack by pressing... Um, run and attack at the same time, and it, it delivers a more devastating attack. If you switch to another weapon and switch back, you can do another power attack without having to wait for your power attack to reload. So that helps with killing, with taking out this orb right here. Three hits, and that orb is down. Good job, our hero. The guardian shield has been reduced even more. And unfortunately, the death that I took in that room put me back another 30 seconds. But now we are on to the ancient ruins of moist overhangs. Pretty much, yeah. It's not really an animation cancel so much, it's um, when you use the power attack, there's like a little gauge that has to go back up before you can do another power attack. And by switching to another weapon and back to the hammer, the gauge is still recharging. But since you switch to another weapon and back to the hammer, you can use a, a power attack and it resets the gauge back to the beginning. It's funny, because I don't actually remember the layout of all of these rooms until I get in them. It's another really simple layout. Giant force field has been weakened some more. Great work, our hero. All right, made up seven seconds. So now we are on to the trial of trial of courage. Now, I just worked out a new route for this room earlier today that I'm pretty stoked about. Um, the way I used to do this room is I would get out of bounds, and I would um, trip the lever from out of bounds, then go open the next door, get the boss key, and then go to the boss area. I can just I figured out that I can just open the chest while I'm out of bounds that contains the boss key. So that's neat. And then I can just enter the boss door from Out of Bounds, too, so this is going to be fun. And 
And there's our boss key. Looks like any. Now I'm still out of bounds. And just like that, we're done. And now we're on to the second piece of the legendary villain beating artifact, the shield. Looks. Um, in order to get into the area that the last boss is in, you have to um, acquire the three pieces of the legendary villain beating artifact or you can't get in there. I haven't found a way to skip into it or glitch into it or anything. They've done a pretty good job of covering their asses on that one. There's just like an invisible barrier around the entire place and you can't get in unless you talk to a specific guy. And that's where the game checks for you if you have all three of the uh, legendary villain beating artifacts. Our hero stumbled. But that uh, that saved me 38 seconds by uh, rerouting that room the way that I did, so that's neat. Put me 11 seconds ahead now, so that's good. A fast travel system seems utterly familiar. So I we use the outhouses to fast travel to the Jolly Barrel Inn here in Stonedale, and just leave, and then we're closer to the next uh, dungeon, which is the ancient ruins of Moldy Ceiling. And there's a statue, a, like, fire-breathing statue outside of this dungeon that will, uh, kill me. So, I'm gonna have to use my shield to block his attack and send it back to him and destroy him. That'll also disable the force field around the dungeon portal. Pick up some bombs while I'm right here. Watch out! So I need five bombs going into the the um not the last boss fight, but it's close to it anyways. The second to last boss fight. Our hero, the Guardian Shield has been weakened. All right, thirty seconds ahead. This is going well, for for how rough it started and the three deaths. I'm doing better than I expected by this point in the game. So now we've got the ancient ruins of Vitamin D edition. Equip my bunny headband so I can move a little quicker. Now, there's likely going to be another statue that fires at me up here, unless I'm far enough away from it. I'm just going to have to listen for it. I think I might be far enough away from it. Nope, it's right there. Those can hit you. Those can actually travel through objects and, and kill you. Um, so whenever, you become, whenever you're whenever you near one of them, you have to block it. Because it'll follow you until it kills you. It'll go through terrain, objects, all kinds of shit. Most epic nose ring in the world right there. Almost 
died right there. That wasn't good. Good job, our hero. The Guardian Shield has been weakened. Well, it lost a couple seconds there. No big deal. That might have been in my travel time. Run, running on, actually just regularly running might actually be slower. I'm not 100% sure on that yet. There's going to be another one of those statues right down here that I got to deal with. Now there's going to be two bomb crates down here I want to pick up. One there. And one there. That puts me at five bombs. So I'm all set for the next boss fight. The Ancient Ruins of Chilly Winds. This one's a little bit more lengthy. So we got to backtrack a little bit through this one. The actual way to do this dungeon is a bit of a pain in the ass, so... Um, we gotta go this way. This is the next buddy box that I'm gonna need. But first, we gotta get the key to the boss fight, the boss room, which is in here. Looks like... Damn, I'm getting my ass ripped. make a save and reload because that'll get the boss off our ass while we take care of this orb these force fields will normally kill you the trick is to roll into it from a close distance if you roll into it from a far away distance um, it'll still deal you damage and kill you so you got to get kind of up close to it and then initiate the roll <laughs> Makes me so happy that they put Ace Ventura in this game. Whether that was by design or not, I don't know, but it makes me happy. Either way. And done. 47... How did I do that 47 seconds faster? I honestly... Oh, it's because I died in the force field on that one, I think. Alright, so now we have the... Ancient Ruins of Misplaced Belongings. Yeah, I'm not thinking it was. Um, when I watched it, there there was... I, I kind of saw immediately where I could make up the most time. But I also found a couple other things, um, like the Trial of Courage... Um, the one where I get the boss key through the floor, um, that wasn't discovered yet. So I've, I've got a little bit of a mix of my own discoveries in here. Nothing's really truly revolutionary, you know, that I have found. Most of the major time-saving stuff was, you know, found already. Just kind of a mix of optimization along with a couple other things. I'm honestly not sure how I did that last dungeon 47 seconds faster. I think it was just because I avoided a death. That, that's the only reason I can come up with. Ah. Oh, 
you to be destroyed. All right. Up a minute 23 going into the trial of strength. Let's hope this next this boss fight goes well. Cuz this this boss fight went extremely well for me. Um, the trick to beating this boss is using the, the bombs that I picked up earlier. Uh, they do the most damage. Um, but since you can, it, but it takes more than five. So what I need to happen is I need the enemies to spawn the, um, I don't remember the name of the enemy, but there's an enemy that actually shoots the bombs at you. And if you're far enough away from them, when he shoots them and they bounce across the ground, you can actually pick them up. It's what I need. I need at least one of those guys to spawn to replenish my bomb inventory. So I can beat that boss as quickly as possible. That was the reason why I picked up the flamethrower earlier in the run. <clears throat> because the flamethrower works as a decent backup if I don't get more bombs. I also have a whoop ass right up the right up in the uh, chamber that I can use if, if need be. So that's helpful. All right, spawn a grenade shooter. Spawn a grenade shooter. Not looking like I'm going to get lucky this time. All right, I still got three bombs, so hopefully the next portal spawns one of those guys. Perfect. Come on, dude, shoot another one. Missed one. Damn it. Really? R the dude's got no health left. Just let me kill his ass. Come on now. When he's blue like that, he's immune to damage. Now he's dead. And that's what I was saving that whoop ass for right there. And there's our third piece of the legendary villain beating artifact, the cape. And this is the only cutscene in the game I can skip. We do that by pressing F1 on the keyboard uh, to make a quick save and F2 to reload. Now, it's going to show you that I still haven't completed this dungeon. The, the quest is not going to advance. However, I still have the cape. So, the prerequisite to get into the not-so-secret portal over here is having the umbrella hat, the shield, and the cape, which I do. So the game does not check to see if this quest was completed. This game, um, right there, that the game checks to make sure you have all three pieces of the legendary villain-beating artifact, which I do. So, earlier in the game, when you get the umbrella hat and the shield, um, if you save quick save during the cutscene and reload the next dungeons don't open so you have to sit through those cutscenes but this last one here you can skip The 
big and scary. That was smooth as silk. Almost too close for comfort. Oh, damn it! And now I take another death. I didn't quite launch far enough. The sound distracted me. So now, unfortunately, that's going to be a guaranteed time loss for this section right here. That was risky. Jesus. I apologize to all of your eardrums. Looks like... Now this is where we would um, sacrifice these three pieces of the legendary villain beating artifact for the real legendary vi villain beating artifact, which is a lollipop. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit rough. I'll turn the game audio down as soon as I'm done with this run. Um, so now that we've got the legendary villain beating artifact for real, the lollipop, we can beat Miss Wyvern and uh, complete the game. To do that, we've got to get some of these dragon eggs, which look like Easter eggs, and put them in the Wyvern Zapper 2000. Once it charges up to 100%, activate it, she gets stuck in place, and this is where we use the legendary villain beating artifact. So now that she's down and taken out of the equation for a minute, we're going to refill the Wyvern Zapper 2000. Let that charge up and get ready to go, and as soon as she pops up, I will uh, activate the zapper and use the legendary villain beating artifact again. So we're going to do this one more time. And that's going to be it. We just got to wait for her to come back up. And there she is. Back up in the air. And that is that. And that is time. 43 minutes, 49 seconds. That is 50 seconds faster than my run on Monday night. Um, and I guess a new world record, as far as I know. The speedrun.com leaderboard got a little bit, um, got flipped upside down, kind of. Um, uh, because the, I'm sorry to bother, sir, but we have a slight inconvenience. This run could be beaten um, in like 25 minutes or so. It's not um, like the legendary villain but that was back on like version one point something. something and so once they updated the main quest a little bit um, in version two then uh, that changed the, the run a little bit so all of the old runs got archived and there's only one run on the board it's version 2.2.0 and that one's 48 minutes 48 seconds the immortal shouted but what about him? So, we can't end the story like this. there was a decent amount of time loss in there, but also a good amount gained. I'm sure the developers will so, something out later on. And it looks like four deaths. I don't know if I counted the last one. So it was either four or five deaths throughout this run. 
Um, biggest time save came from the Trial of Courage and the Ancient Ruins of Chilly Winds. Now, let me know if I'm the only person that gets Happy Gilmore vibes from the last cutscene of this game. Because I definitely feel like the ending cutscene of this game was inspired by Happy Gilmore. <laughs> just just the big dude grunting and everybody chasing him it reminds me of the ending of Happy Gilmore when uh, when Shooter McGavin steals the coat and you got Mr. Larson just <laughs> that's what that reminds me of every time well the old patch category got archived so it's not even there anymore you gotta do some digging to find some of those runs um so if you if you go to the speedrun.com page, there's only um, one run and one category on the board, the board, and that's for version 2.2.0. Um, so I'm I'm still not 100% sure how this is even going to play out, and 